On episode 218 of He Said, She Said Movie Reviews, we take a look at the movie Nightmare Alley. Welcome to He Said, She Said Movie Reviews. This is the podcast where a happily married couple with similar but different movie tastes take a quick, spoiler-free look at the movie, helping you make the right decision before your next movie. I'm your host, Tim. And I'm April. Hey, so we just saw Nightmare Alley at the theaters. Um, We're going to dive right in this because we got there late, my fault. And so we didn't get to see any trailers. We, we we were busting the seat just in time to see the opening credits for this movie. So Nightmare Alley, April, what do you give it? I'm going to give it like a C plus. Well, we, we don't do letter grades. So what is, what is what would that equal to? A two and a half? Three? Mm, I'm going to give him a three. Three? For me, this was a four. Um <laughs> so this is another Guillermo del Toro movie. And of course, if you've seen Pan's Labyrinth, Shape of Water, or anything like that, you know all about Guillermo del Toro. This, uh, you want to do the storyline? Absolutely. Here we go. An ambitious carny with a talent for manipulating people with a few well-chosen words hooks up with a female psychiatrist who is even more dangerous than he is. Okay, once again, this was directed by Guillermo del Toro. Of course, he's known for Blade the original Blade, Blade 1, um, Hellboy 1 and 2, Pan's Labyrinth, Pacific Rim, and, of course, The Shape of Water, which uh, was Academy Award-winning movie. And the writers on this was, of course, once again, Guillermo del Toro, known for everything I just read off. Kim Morgan, which this was her first writing Absolutely. credit. Absolutely. And this is based off the book by William Lindsay Gresham. And the other interesting thing, which I didn't know going into this movie, was that this was actually a remake, too, from a 1947 movie of the same name. Yeah, I found that really interesting because I didn't I didn't read or hear about that anywhere. So you want to do the cast? Sure. Absolutely. An incredible cast. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Of incredible actors and acting in this movie. Definitely. Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett. Tony Collette, William Defoe, Richard Jenkins, Rooney Mara, Ron Perlman, and Mary Steenburgen. Yeah, great, great cast on this. This had a runtime. Uh, this is where April had a little bit oh. of problems. This movie has a runtime of 150 minutes. And for those who need me to do the math for them, that's two and a half hours long. Too long, folks. Too <laughs> and long. It, it was rated R for strong, bloody violence, some sexual content, nudity, and language. However, I will say right away, incredible acting. Just, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, look at the let's cast. Let's just jump I mean, in. Uh, um, I, I agree with Tim on the theme. He really felt like it was that monsters are real, but they are men. Yeah, um, that's that's classic of Guillermo del Toro's it, it stories is. that he's written. They're almost all where, where the, there are monsters, but those monsters are actually men. I mean, in Pan's Labyrinth, it was the Nazis. You in were the right Shape of the Water, that. it was the, the government men. So, yeah. I mean, it, so there, there are monsters in his movies. And all right. The acting. Okay. We've already Incredible, touched on Incredible. Uh, the characters that they sculpted. Listen, you know, you hear me say a three and then Tim say a four. But in all honesty and, and being really direct, this movie, I, I, I mean, from the acting to the, and we'll, we're, we'll get into it, I guess, the cinematography, the production design, just the feel, the dark of the movie was incredible. Um, well, the movie is set during the Depression, the Great Depression right. in the United States. And, and I believe and, them. And yes, I mean, Gosh, we'll, yes. We'll, let's go ahead and jump down to yep. the production value. Okay. The production value of this movie was very well done. The yep. costumes, incredible. the sets, the feel of, of, of being in the Depression. Yep. Uh, I, they and a, even the score added to the feel and, and the tone of this movie so much. And, of course, now moving back up on our our sheet, because we do sheets for every movie, so we don't look like we're just stumbling along here. Um, The direction. Well, it was Guillermo del Toro. I mean, this is an Academy Award winning director. I mean, it's it was awesome. Yeah. And I have to say what he put into the characters 
to me that made the movie. Uh, it 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 was all about that. It was like a character study. Wasn't Kate Blanchett really good in this yes, movie? Of course, she's, she's good in everything she, she does. She is always incredible. But it was just... So they're probably sitting there wondering, then why was April kind of hard on it? Yeah, I'm, I know. know. I'm hearing a lot of praise from yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> but it, and and it had to do. It was a little long, but also there was a few of the things with the plot that. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave give it that there. To you. Um, like you said, the score very much added to the tone and feel of the movie. Cinematography, it was a beautiful movie. Oh, and once gosh, again, yes. they had it just had this depression feel to it the whole dust bowl and just oh man it was just a beautifully shot rarely, movie rarely do movies stick to their their uh time frame the 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 storyline as well as this one did i will get i will give them that for sure Here's an interesting thing, th though. For Guillermo del Toro movie, there wasn't much in the way of special effects. There, there exactly. It was this was was definitely a character study movie, and it wasn't relying on, you know, fishmen or apartments filling up with water for the fishmen to have sex in. So I right, mean, that's right. for those of you who haven't seen Shape of Water. Um, <laughs> the dialogue, so, great. Yeah, too. it was for me. Let's talk about the story arc for a minute. I thought Bradley Cooper's character was so strong. Um, and the ending isn't going to be what people want, yeah. I think. No, I, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, this is a movie. This is a movie I think you'll be thinking about for, for a few days after you see it. It's one of those that, well, mm, okay. Right. There were a few things in the plot for me that, that were kind of, I don't know, just what? not, not, not handled probably as well as it should have been. I'll leave it there. I think that's what got me. And a little bit, you know this, we've talked about the ending a little bit. Towards the ending, there were a few scenes. Well, Guillermo del Toro's movies tend to have a little bit of fantasy feel to yes. them. Yes. And this movie did have that little bit of fantasy feel it to it. Therefore, some things were not explained all that great. There was yeah. it was more like mythical, magical kind of explanations to these things, right. but it wasn't really mythical or magical. Right. So I think that might be. I, I'm trying. I guess I'm mansplaining to you and and, <laughs> and, and trying to, to, to use my words for your words. But. Yeah, it, it just you know I loved I loved the casting. I mean, every character he had. It, that wasn't it. Uh, they started out with a story. It was good, easy to follow, right? Uh -huh. And then there was just some, I don't know quite how to describe this for the first time ever doing this, but there was just a few small things to me that, that I had an, I had an issue here and there with a the plot. Okay. Okay. Uh, bottom line for me is is if you're a Guillermo del Toro movie f uh, fan, you're you're gonna like this movie. It's a strong performances, strong acting, strong direction. It's a good movie. If you're not really a fan of his movies, if you didn't like The Shape of Water and things like, I don't right. think you're gonna like this movie. Right. I think that's a fair a fair analysis there. Okay. So. All right. So this is Nightmare Alley. Uh, right. April gave it three stars. I gave it four stars. So hopefully you will keep going to the movies. And I want to thank everyone. We have heard from so many of you. Uh, Tim had shoulder surgery. So we had to get through that. Yeah, that's why we're kind of late on getting a few of these out. But we'll get a bunch out to you in the next this week. So. But I want to thank y'all for all your support from the moment we started this. And yes, we do read all of your messages and your information. We are back on schedule. And I am trying to get Tim to give up a little bit of time because many of you want to know, you always ask, do you see a lot that you don't review? The answer is yes. So we need to let you know, especially on the streaming platforms, we have some favorite things we've seen. For sure. And some not so favorite things. Oh, that's so. true. <laughs> well, I want to wish everyone a very happy 2022. And thank you so much for all your love and support uh, over the years with, with us when we started this for fun. And now it's turned out to be um, quite the little uh, movie review. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't already done so, please tell a friend about the podcast. We appreciate you. We sure do. Thank you so much. And again, stay happy and healthy. See you at the movies. See you at the movies. <laughs>